Shonda, this episode was excellent. It was, oh, this is one of the best scandal episodes ever. Period. You did your thing. I said, look at nine episodes in, and this is the one that, this is what we were waiting for. But it was at the expense of Huck. And then Abby is still trash. Meg is still trash. We finally get to see some Olitz. All right, all right, all right. And then Trump. Trump. Tr Donald. Ding dong Trump. We go on the war. City. Cecilia. Freddy prepping 50 missiles. To anyway. Let's put that on the back burner for a second. I just wanted to mention that I'm very aware I was watching Scandal live when all this foolery was happening. Uh, so this is my review for Scandal, Season 6, Episode 9, Dead in the Water. And thankfully, no, that wasn't the case. Oh, kind of halfway in, halfway out. The episode starts off with Jake. He goes to the hotel room. He's trying to use his car, trying to figure out why it's not working. He goes in there and Jennifer's gone. Now they're trying to figure out where's Jennifer and where's Huck. Uh, Quinn quickly realizes, oh. Meg. He was with Meg. Meg must have been the mole. Of course, I never liked her. So now Quinn and Charlie, they're on the mission. They're back in the hotel room. They're trying to scout it out to see what happened. Charlie's saying, look, this hotel room is pretty much immaculate. We're not going to find anything here, even if something did happen here. Quinn said, Charlie, you really want to find Huck because you know Huck loves Quinn more than that Quinn loves Huck more than you. That's the truth. Oh, yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. My name is Romy, by the way. Uh, now... Quinn, like I said, she was tearing the hotel room apart. Charlie was kind of doing the bare minimum. Quinn goes, takes the uh, water solution, throws it all over the hotel, and then they turn off the light and enter the black light, and they see blood. The hotel room is covered in blood, and there's two really large blood spots. Uh, Olivia, not knowing where else to turn, she goes to trash bag. I'm sorry, red. Yes, Abby, for those of you who aren't really familiar with Scandal, Abby. Now, Abby trying to pretend like she doesn't know this information. Olivia's just like, look, Hug is missing. Hug is missing, and here's who did it. And Abby's just like, oh, I don't know their names. Well, I, I didn't expect you to know their names. <sighs> Abby is thinking that Hug just got hurt, so that's why she's like, oh, okay, this is kind of awkward. But, you know, she's trying to fake the funk. Olivia's like, no, we think Hug might be dead. Huck is missing. What do you mean Huck is missing? Clearly, the plan didn't go the way that Abby thought it would, so Abby has to pretend. Uh, Olivia wants, you know, to use uh, Webster so that she can go and get some information, find some leads. Abby's just like, wait a minute, you want to work with uh, with Fitz's girlfriend? It's like, oh my god, they're still di Oh! But it's like, I don't care. I just want to find Huck. Can you help me find Huck? Hello? This is Huck we're talking about. Uh, what? Screw your job. This is Huck. I was like, oh yeah, of course, of course. I'm thinking, oh, Abby. Abby Red. If we see Meg. Meg going. She gets out of the car. Huck is awake. Because originally, at, when the episode started, we saw Huck. He was in the trunk of the car. He wasn't moving. But Huck started to move. I don't know if she gave him something or if he just kind of passed out. And he's looking, he sees, of course, Jennifer to his left. He's trying to, well, he's not trying to get out of the trunk. He gets his belt off so that he can go and get Meg as soon as she opens the trunk. She doesn't open the trunk. Instead, he hears his weird sounds like, wait a minute, what's going on? She pushes Huck, well, you know, he's in the car, in the trunk of the car, off the cliff into water. I was thinking, okay, maybe the car's going to get banged up and then he can... You know, jump out. He's still injured anyway, so who cares? No, into water. Hook is like, oh my god, because now he's in this water, this freezing water. He's already bleeding out. What is he going to do? What is he going to do? I said, if Huck dies. So now Huck, he's just, he's distraught. The water is up to his neck at this point, And he closes his eyes. I said, Huck, what are you doing? He goes to his happy place, his place of sanctuary, the place where he's able to think, the place where he's able to be himself, to formulate, and guess where it is? Pope and Associates. So we see Huck, he's drenched in Pope and Associates, and Charlie's there, as well as Quinn, along with Olivia, and they're trying to help him out. 
They're like, okay, Hawk, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? Keep it together. Wake up. Wake up. What, what is the main thing you have to do right now? Keep breathing. Go and get the oxygen. Okay, he gets the oxygen. Okay, Huck, you know what type of car it is. You were awake the entire time. You passed out, but you subconsciously, you were awake. You know what car it was. Okay, it was a Toyota. It was a Camry or Corolla. Okay, we're going to say Camry. We're going to assume it's Camry. So if it was a Camry, what does the Camry... Uh, what year? Okay, it would definitely sound old, maybe 2000. Okay, is it 2000 Camry? All right. What was the main features? Oh, outlets, this, that, along with, oh, power windows. Power windows, huh, you can use those to get out. Come on now, uh, get with the program. But first, things first. How are you gonna get to the windows? Uh, I don't know, I don't know, I'm stuck in the trunk. Charlie's like, how are you gonna get into the windows? You are stuck right now, but, you get to the windows through the car. Come on, Huck, figure this out. Again, this is Huck's mind trying to help him out, but he's using the characters that he's learned to love and trust. Again, I don't know how Charlie got in that mix, but who cares? So now Huck, he's working it out in his mind, and we're back in the real world. He's out in the front, uh, in the main car. The issue is that the windows, because they're wet, they turned off. So they're not fried per se, but they did turn off for safekeeping. So he's not able to exit out. Olivia's like, Huck, get it together. What do you still need to do? Breathe. So he goes back into real world and he breathes again. He's getting enough oxygen because now he's trying to formulate a plan. He formulates a plan of, this is in his fake Pope and Associates. All right, now I need to go. I'm thinking, he has so much time to do this. Like, dang, Huck, super genius. He formulates his plan of, if he lets the car you know, fill up to the top, and there's no more air, there's as much water in the car as there is essentially outside of the car, he'll be able to force the door open. It'll be equal. Right now, it'll be like 600 pounds of weight against the door that he would need in order to push it open in comparison, because the water outside compared to the water in there. I said, I actually learned about this. Don't, don't ask me how or why, but I actually know about this. So th this is accurate. So now, He's trying to figure out, okay, that's perfect, he, but he has to, you know, get one more heap of air. So, like, Huck, breathe! So, he gets the air. Then, he goes, and he's trying to get the door open. He's trying to get the door open. He's trying to get the door open. The door's not opening easy. They told him, look, you better not give up. The door cranks open because he forces it. Now that the door cranks open... He's like, wait a minute, it's stuck on something. It's stuck on this huge rock. He's not moving this thing. He is hurt. So there, he's back and Pope and Associates. But now we see this water coming in. It's like, what, what do you mean? Why is this water coming in? It's because he's losing breath. He's losing hope. His whole, you know, imaginary safe world is shattering. And everyone's trying to help him. Everyone's trying to fill the cracks. And I said, oh, so that's what we saw in the commercial when we saw Olivia. She was wearing that white coat. Because, mind you, she walked in there in her usual, mm, 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 mm. She, I mean, she was clanking down on the floor. I said, Olivia, you look good. And not all white, you look good. Clearly, that's how Hug sees you as the white knight. Oh, the white knight. Got it. Got it. Uh, again, Hug is freaking out. He doesn't know what he's going to do now. The windows, the windows, again, with the windows and wires coming in, Papa Pope, because Papa Pope's like, wait, so you're quitting on me. Huck, you're really going to quit on me. Dude, I put you through all that mess. I put you through all that mess, and yet you're going to quit on me now? You need to figure this out. You need to break that window. He's not able to break the window. He's not strong enough. He's still trying to break the window. I'm thinking, dang, that's a 2000 camera. You should be able to break that. I can break that window like BAM. But again, he's underwater. We get it. We get it. Uh, he's still trying to break the window. He can't do it. Now Meg, because he's losing hope, he's losing uh, oxygen, Meg comes out of nowhere with a gun. So it's like, see, I told you you were a loser. I told you you were a bomb. I told you you were nothing. I said, oh, just for that, smash, shatter that window. Huck, he falls back, and everyone's trying to convince, well, Pop Pope's trying to convince him. Um, he's not really breathing. We see the water come into Pope and Associates. He's starting to drown, and he's giving up hope. He's losing hope. He's losing faith. It's like, come on, dude. What are you doing? What are you doing? Look, Huck, what are you doing? It's like, I'm taking a nap. I'm just over it. I'm done. It's like, okay, do it. What do you mean? Take the nap. Uh, no, I'm not. Sorry. Rest your head. He rests his head. He looks over to the right, and he realizes, I can't break the window 
because I need, uh, you know, a sharp, solid object. Hello? He's resting his head on it. It's a headrest. So he takes it, and he starts sm uh, hitting the window. Again, because Huck is weak, there's a lot of water. He's still trying to hit it. 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 So all we hear is this boom. We don't know what it is exactly. So we're like, um, oh, oh okay, what, what happened? What happened? Because Lewis is like, Huck, you better not give up. You better, you got this. You got this. You got this. So we see him. <gasps> He's outside. He's outside, but he's so tired and he's so weak that he can't swim to shore. So he's bleeding out in this water. I said, Huck, Huck. And then around this time, this is when the foolishness happens with Trump. So because of that, uh, we have all these damn commercials. There are all these commercials. But now it's time for, uh, guess who comes back? Marcus. Uh, it was so annoying because when Marcus came back, I was thinking to myself, I miss Harrison. I actually do miss Harrison. I miss Harrison. I miss Harrison so much. Like, this fake Harrison, that's what Marcus is. That's what he'll forever be. I was over it. Abby goes and calls. She calls, you know, Sally, Sue, whatever little Miss Piggy's name. She, that's what she reminds me of. And it was funny. Because someone in the comments, what was it, Georgina? Was that you? I'm not sure. But someone in the comments was saying how, oh, she looks like, uh, Miss Piggy, and I said, yeah, in the face, not fat or anything, but she just always talks like, well, you know, well, the thing is, and thing, and the fact that she doesn't like Abby, she's like, you know what, I'm done with you, because Abby's saying, what, why didn't you tell me that Huck was hurt and injured and killed and pretty much killed? Why didn't she tell you? Because of this. She knows that you wouldn't have gone for this if uh, Huck was potentially killed. And she said, you know, I'm tired with, of you. I don't even like you. Your services are no longer required. I'm hanging up now. Bye. I said, okay. There's no points for Abby not trying to kill Huck, because I knew that wasn't the case. I knew that she was more so trying to, you know, put some more fear into Olivia. But it backfired, like it always does. So they go to, not Huck's place, but they go to Meg's place, and Meg's place is cleaned out. Or maybe it's Huck's place. I'm not sure. They go to someone's place. Meg's Huck's. They're trying to find something. Charlie said, what about the cloud? Quinn says, Huck doesn't trust the cloud. His security system was even taken out. But Huck always has a backup. He always saves his information on what? A, um, was an airtight laptop. Essentially a laptop that's not connected to the internet. So, they usually call that, what is that, like a black computer? Something of the sorts. Now, they're going to go and try to trace that. Abby, she goes weaseling into Fitz's office and says, I need a friend. I said, of course you do, Red. You need a friend. I need a friend. I just need someone for a moment who I can be my confidant. I can tell them my personal secrets. And he's like, okay, close the door. I said, oh, Fitz is too nice. I would have been like, actually, I would have said the same thing. Yeah, tell me what you need to tell me so I can go and <laughs> deal with you in the appropriate manner. Tell me exactly what you need to tell me. Marcus, he comes in and says, you know what? I'm here to help. I have no actual skills or abilities, but I'm here to help. Olivia is so hurt and desperate, and her rock, the one man that has never wronged her hug, is gone, and she doesn't know what to do. So she actually tells Marcus, no, Marcus, stay here. Just, just, just stay with me. Don't talk, because I don't want to hear you talk. I don't even want to see your face. I just need the presence, and yours will do. That's, in a nutshell, Huck, he gains the uh, strength to go and swim ashore. But now, we see someone who we haven't seen in a long time. Huck, without a beard. I said, who is that? I didn't even recognize the person. I said, he looks familiar. It's Huck. Now, again, it, his mind's playing mind games. He's pretty much done for, and his mind is telling him, look. Ooh, you're tired, aren't you? Look at the time. It's 7.25. You know, by 8 p.m., the sun will be gone, the coyotes will be out, they'll eat you alive. You are weak. You are nothing. You are alone. No one's going to find you. No one's going to save you. You're not going to make your way out of here. You're just going to stay here. I said, dang. Huck's mind is evil. It is evil. It is convoluted. It is clouded. And I feel bad for Huck. I really do, even more now than ever. I didn't think that was possible. I really didn't think that was possible. Poor Huck. But, um, 
Olivia, again, she's trying to figure out with her people and her team, what is she going to do next? Mark is saying, you know, I'm here to support you. We're here to work. We're here to figure things out. And right now, they don't have leads. They really don't have leads. Abby comes out, and uh, I'm sorry. They do have a lead. They show Olivia something. They're like, you're going to want to see this. And it was Abby meeting up with, uh, I'm with Piglet and Meg. <laughs> and Olivia slapped Abby. And then Abby was like, look, slapped her again. I was like, so here's how this goes. You're the one set this up. I went to you as a friend. You went and you stabbed me in the back. Abby, I told you. The one thing you better not ever do in your life is cross me. Do not cross me. If you cross me, then it's over for you. I told you that. I told you that. And you didn't listen. So here's the thing. Well, Olivia, no, I can't explain. I came here to talk. Boom! One more time. I said, thank you. Olivia said, here's the thing. I don't want to hear what you have to say. It's not valid. I won't believe you anyhow. Here's what you can do. You can come in here. You can come in here because you want the power. You want to be me so bad. She didn't say that. And now I'm saying this. You want to be Olivia so bad. You wanted the power. It got to your brain. Huck. My Huck. Now I'm back to Olivia. My Huck. You went. You put him in danger. I don't care what your excuse is. I don't care what your reasoning is. I don't care what your thought process was. But you're going to come in here. And I'm going to tell Quinn. Because when Quinn finds out, she's going to kill you. And trust me. I'm going to go and take... Whatever chair I need to, since you know about me killing um, the, what was it, the vice president, I'm going to take whatever chair I need, go and slam it against you, do I need do whatever I need to do with it to get information out of you, or to get my revenge. And Quinn, oh, you know Quinn's crazy. Huck is a true grade A, but Quinn, she's a nice B-, minus, and Quinn will be after that. I said, Olivia... I appreciate this so much. We see Trash Bag Meg, I mean Garbage Meg, and she goes, she hears something. So she takes out this gun. She shoots at her door. She goes out there because she dyed her hair already. She goes out there. Quinn said, where Huck? Where Huck? Where's Huck? Olivia's still over it. Like, you went and betrayed me. You went and betrayed me. And for what? It's like, you know what? I had to do what I need to do. Olivia, you don't understand this. You use people as well. You did whatever it took to get whatever you want. I'm thinking, Red, we don't care if this is the truth or not. This isn't the point. The point is, you betrayed Olivia, your friend, the woman who helped you, the woman who saved you from being abused, gave you a job, an occupation, drive, for a, a White House. Olivia's convoluted. We already know that. You're not telling us anything new. But we, what we are learning is that you're not, you're supposed to be better. Well, we know you couldn't be, but you're supposed to aspire to be better. Instead, you try to take the same formula, slightly retool it, and use it for your own advantage. I can't wait for Olivia to go off on you. To go off on you is what I'm thinking. And she is. She's ready to hit you again. She's ready to have Quinn kill you. She, no, torture you, not kill you. You deserve killing. I mean torture, not kill. Now, Quinn is like game on. Huck, he's grasping for dear life. Jennifer, he drags her out of the water as well. And I think, okay, that's interesting. I knew things were going to get good because it said uh, viewers advisory. No, viewers advise. Graphic content. Okay, someone's about to get tortured. Someone's about to get tortured. Someone's about to get tortured. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> Quinn, she goes, she takes out her toolbox. She has Meg strapped down. She's stabbing Meg in the thigh. In the uh, thigh. Stabbing her on the arms. Then she goes, she takes the pliers. Because he said, oh, you still want to talk? Snaps. The trigger finger says, oh, I'm not done. I want the other one. Takes another one. Says, I'm still not done. Now I'm going to go and mess with your face. Essentially takes a Freddy versus Jason type of tool. Scratches and claws Meg's face because she realizes most people don't really care about what's going on um, below the neck. 
it's that face, that profile. Because the body, you can retool, um, you can build that up. But that face, that's your identity. Most people, they can't train vanity. I said, oh, look at that. Look at the right, this episode. My God. Woo. But then she said, okay, now that I missed your pretty little face. No, your little face. Tell me where Huck is. <laughs> you see, looking at you and how you act now, I understand why Huck loved me the way that he never loved you. That pissed up, that pissed off Quinn, because we know Quinn loves Huck. And I've been telling you this, that Quinn still loves Huck. She took, took that knife, slit, slit Meg's throat. And I <laughs> say, Oh, no, 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 because now we'll never find out. But Meg wasn't going to snitch anyway. I, Meg wasn't going to say anything. So now Abby comes back with her tail in between her legs, and they're like, look, we don't know. We don't know where Huck is. Mind you, um, Quinn's coming back with her tail in between her legs. Abby shook in the corner like, if we don't find Huck, I'm dead. Quinn's upset and hurt because she realizes, oh, my God, I, I messed up. I messed up royally. And Olivia was over it. So you killed the one lead we possibly had. Congratulations. Did it feel good? Because now Hug's dead. Now we can't find him. Now Hug's probably dead. Off a cliff somewhere? Dead. Thank you. I said, wait a minute now, Olivia. Olivia. You're the same person who got mad and killed someone with a chair. With a steel chair. So I'm going to need for you to back up and back off for a little bit. Were you right? Yes. Again, I don't care, though. Because this is Huck. And you know Quinn loves Huck. Charlie doesn't even realize how much Quinn loves Huck. Charlie, I felt bad for Charlie, because Charlie didn't never stood a chance. Never. Here we have Jake saying, Oh, it's over with. Oh, we're done. It, Huck is dead. We shouldn't be looking for him anymore. Look, Vanilla Pudding. I'm going to need for someone to kill Jake. Because when Jake said that, I said, and this is why we should have killed you. This is why you need to die. This is why you need to go. All of a sudden, we find out why Charlie's here and what his actual purpose is for this moment. Because up until this point, he's been, he's just there. And I never understood it. Charlie goes and gives Olivia a speech. She says, wait a minute. And Charlie, I said, wait, is Charlie saying everything we've been thinking for like the past two seasons? What? What? He tells Olivia, you're a fixer, right? She said, excuse me? Yeah, you're the fixer. You need to go in there. You need to fix this. You need to help my uh, girlfriend, my fiance now, going to be wife and maybe mother. I said, wait, is Quinn pregnant? Oh, maybe not yet, but he wants her to be. Okay, interesting. You need to go in there because you fix people. You're like this white, white knight, this gladiator. You need to do what you do. I don't know what you've been doing recently, but... This is the moment where you need to go in there, rally your team. Because Quinn's not going to stop looking for Huck. She's going to look for him until she finds a body. That's the mindset that we need to have. That regardless if Huck is alive or not, we need to continue to look for him. I said, Charlie, thank you, but why is it coming from you? This is so weird. This is so, this, this is so weird. And it worked. Because it, it was like, Olivia, you're mean. You're not nice. You come down that hallway every day clanking your shoes like you're something, like you're this big bad, and you definitely bad and bougie. Definitely bad and bougie. And yet you're not acting like it right now. You're a pillar of strength. Whether I like you or not, you're a pillar of strength. You're not nice to me. I'm thinking, she doesn't have to be nice to you. She's probably trying to figure out why do I let you in here, because what do you do for me? What do you do for me except for this one point? But she gets the pep talk that she needs. She goes in there, says, everyone to the conference room. Everyone to the conference room. It says, regardless, Huck, we need to find him. Dead or alive, we need to find him. You hear me? That is the goal. That is the goal. That is the mantra. We're going to do whatever it takes. We're going to cross-reference. And because that's what's happening, at this point, we even have... We even have Abby... I know, this is weird. We even have Abby going and helping out. And they realize, wait a minute, something's not right here. We can't find Huck for a reason, right? So why can't we find Huck? Because his cell phone, we were trying to track his cell phone, but Huck wasn't the only one. He, in comes Quinn, Jennifer, 
hook us with Jennifer. If we search her phone because Jay gave her a phone, we can find him. And they did just that. They found him, and it was Olivia and Jake who were there. And Olivia was like, oh my god, Hook! Oh my god! J Jake, is he breathing? Is he breathing? Hook, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. I said, oh, it better be okay. Because Abby, you're not gonna live if it's not. So now they're in the hospital. Hook is alive! <laughs> Hook is alive! But he may have brain damage. He lost a lot of blood. He may not ever wake up. I said, you know what? I don't have time for these variables. Everyone's over. I'm thinking, get the get the tool shed out, the tool chest out, because Abby, we're coming after you. We're coming after you. Uh, next thing we know, we see someone, this white man, strutting like he's Obama. I said, wait a minute, that has to be Fitz, and it was. Fitz came down. Fitz came down for Olivia. Gave her that hug. I said, no. Gave her that hug. Embraced her. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, we needed this. This episode is perfect. The next week is the 100th episode where Olivia marries Fitz and all this stuff. Oh, Jesus. Here we have a lit. I was tired of them before, but we just need this moment. She just needs her man. Fitz just needs his woman. They embrace. And he tells her, you know what, is your team good? They'll be strong even if Hug doesn't make it. They'll rely on each other. Are you good? Mm. Uh, but it was like about Red. She told me everything. Oh, she told you everything. So she implicated you as well. Oh, so she's really trash bag. Throw her in the trash. Th throw her in Meg because Meg is the garbage can. Uh, Red is the trash. Now, <laughs> he said, you have to forgive her. We've all done evil things. You know what? You've forgiven me for everything I did. I've forgiven you. And Olivia almost had that look of forgiving me for what? I said, Olivia, now let's not pretend. You, you've had your trifling ways. I love you. I love you, but come on now. Let's stop it. Now, I was on your team as far as we're not forgiving Abby for nothing. She said, I'm not like, forgiving her. Huck! He, she hurt Huck. She put Huck's life in danger. And you want me to believe, uh, forgive her? No, that's never going to happen. No, 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 yeah, no. He said, you have to do this. We've all sacrificed for that power. You understand what that power does to people. You, I said, mm, damn, why is Fitz making sense? I don't like this. What is going on? And that was enough to convince Olivia so Olivia, she's going to go. She sits next to Abby outside, even though she's rolling her eyes and has this look of, I can't believe I'm here. She puts her hand on Olivia, on Abby's hand, and she's like, all right, come on, get it out. And Abby starts crying. Boo-hoo-hoo. But what really matters is Quinn, she's talking to Hug while he's knocked out, and she's telling him, you better wake up. By this time, there was another. I can't believe in the middle of scandal, Trump starts talking. That was another trash moment. I said, nothing will defeat the greatness of this episode right now. Quinn, you better come hard, because we need this right now. Quinn pours her heart out to Huck, says, love you, need you. I'm going to stand right here, regardless of what happens. I got you. Don't worry, but you need to come back fast, because, I, look, I'm going to be right here. going to be right here. And then she's like, no, I can't deal with this. I need some air. And it's like, oh, eh, Quinn. <laughs> She runs, I mean, she puts down that guard on the bed where Huck is, and she gets right in there right next to him. She's like, I got you, I got you. And she puts her head on him. Everything's going to be all right. Here comes Charlie looking in like, my love, my love? She's, she's, oh my God, she loves him. That's the thing. She loves him. I didn't, no, no, I already told you that, man, this is why you need to listen to me, anyway, so that was it, Scandal was amazing, thank you, Shonda, thank you, production, this episode was fire, please like, comment, subscribe, come back next week, dang, I need a nap, not self to clean.